Hey guys, welcome back to my series on teaching homeschool without a curriculum. Today we're going to be tackling math, teaching math without a curriculum. It's not surprising to me that this is the most requested subject to do for this series. So I've already done language arts, I've done history, I did like an overview of what it's like kind of to teach homeschool without a curriculum, but today we are going to be doing math. Now, before we get started, I feel like this subject needs a bigger disclaimer than any other one. For some reason, math gets treated completely different than every other subject. Even amongst homeschoolers, you'll hear people say, oh, we unschool except math, or we do this except math. And like math is always, I don't know, it, I don't know if it's necessarily like above, like it's a better subject, but it's just, it's always separate. It's always different. And my challenge is, what if we started treating math more like we treat other subjects? Especially as we homeschool, and I feel like homeschoolers already are thinking outside the regular box as it is. What if math wasn't just lectures and worksheets and something completely separate? What if we saw math as something that can be learned as we go about our everyday lives like so many other subjects are? So I'm gonna be sharing a bunch of our favorite math resources um, and just keep in mind yeah we have pulled from curriculums before but we've never like actually used one and by pulled from them i mean something like khan academy or the good and the beautiful has like a free math program every now and then i'll like pull up a lesson on there but we've never like just sat down and worked through it uh, we make it work for us but for the most part, with my kids, we've just learned math as we go. And I don't think it's been detrimental. I think as my son gets older, he's going to be more interested in math and he might dive into a curriculum because he wants to. But I don't think the fact that we haven't done a curriculum has been harmful to them. If anything, I think it's made math less scary because unless, you know, you've got those kids that they do love math. but. Other than those kids, almost every kid will tell you that math is their least favorite subject, and I try to avoid that with my kids. I did math in high school, I did calculus, I did math in university, and I can tell you that I remember nothing other than the basic math that I use on a regular basis. And contrary to what my high school teachers told us, we do now walk around with calculators in our pockets. So anytime I need to figure something out that I don't know, I can figure it out. My five-year-old just told me that it's two o'clock, so it's snack time, so I told him I need to wrap up here first. Um, I was going to say, if there is something that, for math, that I find I need over and over again, I keep Googling the same thing, I will eventually learn it. But there are so many things like, okay, so I like to read books, but sometimes I read eBooks, but sometimes I wanna figure out what page I'm on in a book. So I will like Google how to figure out the percentage of something. And then there's like a handy dandy calculator online where I can just plug in the percentage of the book that I'm at and how many books, how many pages the book has in total and it'll figure out what percentage or what page I'm on based on my percentage. Um, does a person need to know how to do that off the top of their head and be able to calculate it out? No. I don't think so. If a person needs to know a certain thing for math, I think you'll dive in enough and do it enough that you'll learn it. That all being said, let's get into some of my favorite resources. Once again, I have an old video from three years ago where I shared a bunch of resources. I didn't go back and watch it. There will be some overlap. There will be some new things here. One of the things that my little kids have mostly liked is the YouTube channel Number Blocks. That is a really good resource for learning different numbers and basic math and um, I actually really like it and my 10 year old kind of watches it with the little kids and it's really educational for him too so that's one resource that you can look into if you have littler kids and math like every other subject requires a lot of books because I like books one oh where do I even start here okay let's start with this so bedtime math this is a series I think she has three books um, bedtime math and then we have the second one and then I think there's one more as well and these are just like one page a tiny little story and some math questions to go along with it so for instance I'll read this one the tooth of the matter isn't it kind of weird that when you're a kid your teeth fall out okay so your teeth start falling out when you're between four and seven hopefully not because you've had them knocked out by a flying baseball 
The good news is you replace all those baby teeth with a whole new set, up to 32 of them. Um, so then there's questions here. I, I did just skim over that. So the wee ones, how many teeth are running away from the girl in the picture? So they just have to count. Little kids, how many legs do those crazy teeth have altogether? So now you're either counting to a higher number or you're multiplying. Uh, big kids, most mammals, like dogs, rabbits, and beavers, lose their baby te teeth too. If this year you lose nine teeth and next year you lose three more and your dog loses seven, how many teeth did you lose altogether? So there's a bigger math equation. Bonus, ant eaters don't need teeth at all. If there are 38 picnickers at a picnic and half of half are people and the other half are ant eaters, how many picnickers have no teeth? And then the answers are all on the bottom there. So this is just filled with different random little facts and then some questions to go along with it. We have done this um, like when, whenever we do a morning basket usually we're reading from one, one of these and it's a fun way to do math. If your kids are a little older than that, um, the same author has how many guinea pigs can fit on an airplane. So these are questions that have more complicated math answers. If a ladybug were medium sized, how many dots would it have? And so then they go into like how to figure out the whole thing. You figure out the details and then 1,200 square inches of skin would have 1,200 times 200 equals 240,000 dots. So they're a little bit more complicated, but if your kids are ready for that, this one's a good resource as well. Another fun book series I like is by Greg Tang. This one is The Grapes of Math. So we get these from the library quite a bit, Math for All Seasons, and the one that I own is Math Appeal. So these are riddles that have to do with math. So this one's Sweet Cherries. Apples are crabby, berries are blue, cherries are sweet, and so are you. How many cherries do you see? Please don't count them separately. Pair the cherries bunch by bunch, add them quickly before their lunch. And then, also, if you go to the back, so cherries here, it shows you that if you group them this way, that's a group of 10, this is a group of 10, that's a group of 10, and then you can easily figure out that there's 30 cherries. And it kind of sums that all up here. So they just have different riddles for figuring out how to add things. It's a really good practice, and I really love these. I was told about these when I was getting my teaching degree in university, and Ever since then, I've just been a major fan of this series. Another book that I really like, Osborne actually has quite a few. They do have like some wipe clean math books. This one is their times table, Lift the Flap. And Lift the Flaps are just so much fun. So a baby frog eats two flies, the big frog eats five times as many. How many flies does the big frog munch? And then you've got your answer, two times five equals 10. So this one is fun. It goes by different numbers here. So we got the four times table, the five times table, six, seven, all the way up to 12. So this one is a fun resource. And then another resource that I really like for math is games. Because when you are doing games, you are doing sneaky math. When kids are figuring out their points, they often don't even realize that they're doing math. I forgot to bring one down, but I really like King Domino. That was a, that's a really fun one for figuring out points. Um, other than like addition, which I'll show a few games there as well. One of the aspects of math is deductive reasoning. And I love the cat crimes game for this. And this one has 40 crimes to solve. And here you have like cats that are the suspects. And it'll, the cards will say like, Ginger was sitting in front of the birdcage. Tomcat was sitting next to Ginger, or sitting to Ginger's right. And then you have to like move, figure out where the cats were all sitting and then figure out which one committed the crime, like who ate the bird or stole the yarn or whatever it was. So this one is fun. And cats, my family is mostly a cat, on team cat instead of team dog, but they do have dog crimes as well, I'm pretty sure. But who would want that one? Uh, one that I think was, was it earlier this year? my son got, and I think he played it like 30 times in the first week, is cover your assets. So this, you have a selection of cards that are all like collectible things. So here you've got cash under the mattresses, you've got comic books, you've got model trains, there's um, classic cars, and you have to try to make pairs. 
and then you have to try to steal other people's pairs as well and whoever ends up with like the most value of stuff at the end wins and you are doing fairly large math because I think the cheapest thing is five thousand dollars and the highest is fifty thousand so that's really good for when your kids are a bit older and the last game that I'm going to talk about is Sushi Go. This one is a card game. We have the regular Sushi Go plus we have Sushi Go Party. And the, the math for figuring out your points afterwards is really cool because some things you have to multiply, some things you have to add. Um, there's, there's different aspects of math involved. So there's that. Whenever I ask about suggestions for math games, people always say Sleeping Queens, which is great. We have that one and we never play it. So like if, if you want to check it out, if you love it, great. For whatever reason, our family just does not gravitate towards that one. So those are some of my favorite math resources. A lot of it is just figuring out math in daily life, baking, figuring out um, how much money my kids are making, what they want to spend money on, etc. Uh, just like we do for us people that don't use it for their jobs and that's how I'm raising my kids and so far it's really working. But like I said, I do think I have a kid that will want to do a little bit more in-depth math soon. But for now, this is working for us. Thanks for being here, guys.